Welcome to a new vlog. It's been about six months since I reviewed this thermal camera from Kaiwitz and if you watched that video you might remember I mentioned that this is likely a rebadge from an OEM of thermal cameras and you guys pointed out in the comments that it could be a uh, guide PC210 model because it looked the same, had the same specs. Uh, in any case it's a great little camera. I still uh, reached for this in the past six months every time I needed to do a thermal measurement just because of that super fast instant boot time it has and it, also the resolution is the same as on all of my other thermal cameras so it has been a great choice for me but that's about to change because now uh, I have this guy which is the uh, guide IR E2 plus model which has been kindly provided by my favorite EU test equipment distributor, LS Shop, for the purpose of this review. So if you are in the market for test equipment, please check out their website, lshop.eu, and you can also do that if you wish to support my channel to continue producing content like this. As usual with these cameras, we get nice packaging with nice protection for the camera, and inside uh, the packaging, you get the standard uh, wrist strap a USB Type-C to USB Type-A cable and this is the optional um, macro lens which I got from lshop.eu specifically this is not included by default and a wall charger uh, in this case with the proper EU plug so with this upgraded E2 Plus model they've kind of kept the same form factor in fact from the exterior this e2 plus model is almost identical to the standard e model and identical to the older uh, pc200 uh, series you wouldn't even notice a change if it weren't for the different trigger button but you know everything else is identical you still get the same tripod uh, mount at the bottom of the handle uh, the same wrist strap is included in the package uh, you have you know the same buttons for controlling the camera you got the same rubber cover up here uh, for the usb port except that here you'll notice a difference uh, on the e2 plus you don't get the uh, micro sd card slot anymore because this e2 plus model comes with 16 gigabytes of uh, internal storage and I like this feature because you know 16 gigabytes is more than you would ever need for this type of tool and I like that because I don't have to mess around with having to put an SD card in there anymore now from the front it looks to have pretty much the same uh, lens system it's got the same white LED floodlight and laser pointer but the actual specs of the IR lens uh, is different on this E2 plus you get a focal length of 7 millimeter with a narrower field of view when compared to the 3.2 millimeter uh, focal length on the PC210 or the Kaiwitz here and this translates into a more zoomed in view on the E2 plus uh, which you can see here in the sample footage uh, when the two are compared in addition to that the software on this e2 plus works some magic to virtually extend the ir sensor re resolution to effectively double it to 512 by 384 pixels and you can really tell that when turning on the camera and comparing the output with the uh, previous model you can really see all of the tiny details show up like here uh, we can see the reflection of these uh, markings in exposed copper on this pcb so even though they're using probably the same IR sensor inside of this with a different lens system and extra softer features and probably a more powerful processor, they're able to give you more detail in the image on this E2 Plus model. But here comes the killer feature. And so while on the previous models you had this you know, fixed focus lens uh, with the new E2 Plus, uh, that's why you get this extra button here on the trigger that controls the autofocus feature or should we call it auto manual focus feature the nice thing is that now I can go you know closer to the to the object that I'm inspecting I can hit that button and then the camera will autofocus then I can go you know further away from the uh, from the actual device I'm ex ex inspecting and then I can focus again I can point it at an electrical panel which is 
two meters away, hit the focus button again and it will autofocus. And that's a pretty neat and useful feature, especially for field work where you're often having to inspect stuff at different distances. And the function is particularly nice because of this smaller button they've put on the trigger, makes it very intuitive to use this way uh, while the larger button remains uh, for the purpose of capturing uh, images or video. Because this is also an upgrade, the E2 can now capture video all stored on the internal 16 gigabytes of memory. And on top of that, LS Shop is also offering this custom macro lens attachment, uh, which you can purchase separately to specifically allow you to get macro shots of PCBs and chips. This is a feature which is very useful if you're doing any sort of PCB level repair or debugging, uh, as I'm showing here in this uh, sample uh, footage on this PCB. It allows me to zoom right into uh, you know, individual pins, individual resistors, I can even see individual tracks on this uh, PCB. Uh, and if you have, for example, larger chips, you can even see individual hotspots inside the larger packages. And honestly, these days, uh, you need to have something like this in your toolbox and if, if you're doing any sort of PCB level uh, repair work. The boot time is a little longer on the newer E2 Plus, which is a sign they're using maybe a different processor and different firmware for these uh, upgraded models. So the older PC200 series was almost instant to turn on and I like that very much. That's why I started to always reach for it. But with the newer model, um, we don't get that anymore. It's something like eight to nine seconds until it's operational, which is not ideal, but it's still faster than other cameras I've tested and acceptable. I would trade in that eight to nine seconds boot time for the added performance on the thermal image and the extra features that you get with it. Checking out the menu system does indeed show uh, it's it's different looks to be a newer GUI design even has some you know sliding animations going through the menu system Not that I would care about that. It's just what I'm noticing here uh, I notice a few uh, new options in the menu system. We noticed the super resolution option uh, I described earlier we noticed uh, that there is a Wi-Fi option and the ability to do over-the-air upgrades Wi-Fi can work in two modes on, on this uh, unit. It can connect to your router uh, to connect to the internet, which makes the OTA upgrades uh, function very easy to use. Or it can also function in um, AP mode, uh, which allows you to connect to it via the smartphone app called uh, Thermography, available for both iOS and Android. So once you enable this uh, AP mode, you connect to it uh, via your phone to this specific AP name with this password and then you should be able to connect uh, from the app to the camera. And the two modes do not function at the same time. Uh, it's uh, one or the other. In the app, you have to click the um, camera shutter button to connect, which is kind of non-intuitive if you ask me, but that's how it works. Uh, now you can view the feed on your smartphone and do the usual things like capture a photo or a video and add measurement points. If that's useful or not, it's up to you in your particular use case because personally I think that if you're getting a handheld standalone camera like this one, you're not getting it to use with your smartphone, but the option is there uh, should you need it. Battery life is probably a downgrade on this E2 Plus model because in the data sheet they quote 11 hours runtime whereas the older series was over 16 hours of usage. So I'm going to assume that the newer system processor is likely more power hungry and they've kept the same battery capacity inside, hence the lower runtime, but honestly still 11 hours of runtime is great battery life. There is still a visual image um, camera present and you can use that to have the two images merged or as picture in picture and it's still an option that I won't be using for two reasons. It's never perfect alignment, it's distance dependent and second thermal image sensors have gotten so good resolution in recent years that I don't feel the need for the visual images anymore. The temperature measurement range is pretty much the same, uh, minus 20 to plus uh, 550 degrees 
uh, Celsius, which is split into two ranges similar to the older model. Uh, and the measurement accuracy is the same plus or minus two degrees Celsius. Now, if you want to download the captured images, you connect via the USB type C port to your computer and the camera appears as, as an external drive. It might also be possible to do it over Wi-Fi. I haven't checked. However, it's important to note that you have to set the USB mode option under menu to USB mode for that. The other option is projection, which is for providing a video feed as a webcam. Also important to note is that I could only get this to work under a Windows PC. My Mac did not detect this as a storage device when I connected. And I think it's also important to mention that all of these extra features and goodies for the E Plus model are coming in for just an extra 40 euros over the standard E model. And because the PC series is not even sold anymore, I think that's totally worth it. I would absolutely pay an extra 40 euros for these upgrades. And if you're a follower of the Volvo YouTube channel, you get an extra 10% discount by using the discount code I have provided in collaboration with LS Shop in the, in the description below the video. Uh, that makes it a very sweet deal because it offsets the extra cost, so you're basically getting the newer upgraded model without any extra cost. Uh, the discount code will be valid for two weeks until 16th of uh, April and then it's gone. So make sure you take advantage of this offer ASAP. Uh, it won't be valid anymore after two weeks. I'm not sure it's worth your time if I go over all of the other detailed functions of this camera. Those have been reviewed in previous videos of mine for the other models. In conclusion, this will be my go-to thermal camera whenever I need a handheld format uh, because it has very good resolution, built-in storage, video capture capability, good battery life. The boot time, it's decent, 8 seconds, it's not great but it's not terrible. Um, it's however robust and compact, it can survive a drop, so this is my new favorite for handheld measurements. But I also want to hear your feedback. Do you already own a guide IR camera? How is that working for you? Is it one of the newer model or the older PC200 series? I would love to hear it in the comments. That was all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you make the right decision if you're looking to get a new handheld thermal camera. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content ahead. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you in the next video.